Okay, so today we're going to be looking at the quote, fair is foul, fair is foul and foul is fair. And this is right at the beginning of the um, play. And the, it's the, the people that say this is the witches. So just get this down. So the, it's the witches that say this right at the beginning of Act 1. Okay, so it's right at the start of Act 1 there. So we'll just put here, Act 1. So it's a paradox. This is a paradox. So underline this when you get it down. So it's a paradox. And a paradox is a seemingly absurd or contradictory statement. So this, fair is foul and foul is fair. That contradicts. How can something be fair if it is foul? Okay, so think about that. This quote, the witches in this quote, they establish that Scotland is full of turmoil. So underline the word turmoil because that's a key word that you will need when you are writing about Macbeth in your essays. And it's full of turmoil and treachery. Okay, so underline that as well. Another key word. It also, the, in this quote, it also shows that the natural order, so the way things should be, has been reversed and corrupted. So everything that was fair is now foul. So it's contradictory. Everything's been flipped on its head, turned upside down. So let's have the word order as well, because we've looked at order and chaos before. So the order has been flipped on its head, and we see that throughout the play, Macbeth, because the order of what should be is flipped into complete chaos when Macbeth goes against the divine right of kings and, kill, and commits regicide and kills King Duncan. And we see that happen throughout the play okay so if i look at uh, the first part that we're going to focus on we're going to look at we've said here so i'm going to put a number two here okay if you can see this all right i'm going to put a number two and um it's the witches that say this so it's the witches that say it and it sounds like a chant so it sounds like a chant slash a spell so we get this kind of supernatural strange way of way of the witch is talking it's not how a human would talk and it contradicts what is normal it's, it already goes against the natural order of society you wouldn't hear a, hum, a human chanting and making a spell okay so it's that idea of going against that that natural order of what's right okay so here i'm just going to draw a little this is my little cauldron doesn't look like a cauldron at all and we're going to do a little pointer heart that links to the witches which again is nothing like a witch i'm not sure what that's meant to be but we'll leave it okay so this quote is i suppose is an, in, an inversion of the natural it shows that everything is not what it seems right from the beginning of the play so here let's write this down okay so we're going to write inversion of the natural okay so it's an inversion the inversion this quote is showing the inversion of the natural it shows that everything is not that everything that everything is not as it seems so it shows that everything's not as it seems right from the very beginning okay so straight away we can see that something is not right okay and i suppose we could put here we could say that it foreshadows or remember what foreshadow means it's taking us into the future and showing us something so foreshadows it could foreshadow the deception of Macbeth so it could foreshadow the deception of Macbeth I'll give you a minute to just get that down so it could foreshadow the deception of Macbeth this quote right at the very beginning and then I suppose how do you you're thinking how does it show show us that then so that takes me on to my next point so if something is fair how can it be foul so that links me to this this um this theme okay all right which is appearance versus reality oh sorry guys appearance versus 
reality. Okay, let's underline that. Okay, so appearance versus reality. And what that means is that what's on the um what's on the exterior, so what's on the outside not doesn't necessarily mean that what is reality so for example you have used the word veneer before so when you somebody puts a front on okay Macbeth put a front on at the beginning he came across as heroic brave valiant soldier okay who was a nobleman fighting for King Duncan and that was his appearance on the exterior but actually in reality on the interior he was actually um, deceptive, he was deceitful, he was um, fraudulent and he was vindictive, he was malevolent however he did come across as being benevolent because he came, came across as being a kind and caring person that wanted to protect the king but actually he wasn't so when we think about it if we write this down we can put appearances, let's write this down appearances are deceptive oh I've missed my eye out, appearances are deceptive okay because you can't always work out what's underneath so appearances are deceptive people may not be as they seem people may not be as they seem is that what the witches was trying to show in this quote fair is foul well Macbeth came across as being fair at the beginning but actually is foul was it that Foul is fair. Let's see. Okay. And I suppose you could say, um, if you have if you have what an, an, an appearance for somebody on the exterior, but one internally, I suppose we could say that you might have a dual personality. Alright, so dual personality. So you might have a dual the dual personality. Matt Beth came across as having that because on the exterior that brave heroic person the valiant benevolent kind of person when actually internally inside he was that um evil malevolent um vindictive dishonest okay deceptive fraudulent kind of person on the interior so think about that his appearance was deceptive so when we've looked at that I want you to think about this little point, okay? So Macbeth was fighting, all right? He was fighting. He was fighting a war, all right? And the war that he was fighting, I suppose, it would be violent, and the war would be. There would, be, but there would be innocent people that died as well. But he was fighting for what he believed because of the king. So here, if we put down the land, it, the land that Macbeth lived in is a land of disruption. So there was already disruption there. The natural order was already being disturbed. So it's a land of disruption. Okay, so on the exterior, we could see that it was a land of disruption. Okay, because there was a war taking place there. All right. And it was, I suppose if there's a land of disruption, you've got disharmony. So there was no harmony there because the innocent people was dying and they was fighting for their their leader all right like Macbeth was fighting for King Duncan all right and trying to protect him so there was disheart there was disharmony there and it was ravaged by war this disharmony was ravaged okay was ravaged by war and violence okay oh I've missed my eye out by the by war and violence but and it is a but this this violence was valued okay this violence was valued and the violence was valued by king duncan so you can put here duncan valued it okay because he was he was happy that um, macbeth was fighting for it he was happy that macbeth won won the um won it I'm just going to move this to see if I can focus it in a bit more for you guys. Is that better? Yes. Um, he was happy that Macbeth was fighting for him, and he was happy when he won it, and he rewarded him, didn't he? With because of his violence, he rewarded him because of that violence, and gave him the Thane of Cawdor. Okay, which again led to this. He thought it was being fair by giving it, but then it led to that foul um, side of Macbeth being released even more. So he thought it was he was valuing that. So the appearance was not actually reality. Okay, again. 
So when we've looked at this now, what we're going to look at next is the fact that the paradox um, then becomes a metaphor. So let's write this down. So get, let's write this over here. So the paradox of this become, uh, becomes a metaphor. Okay, let's underline this. The paradox you can use as metaphors. So the battle against the traitors makes a foul day. So right, let's have a look at this. So the battle, the traitors, was the people that had gone against King uh, King Duncan. The battle against um, the traitors, and the traitors was the people that had gone against King Duncan. I've just said the battle against the traitors makes a foul day okay well it does make a foul day because who else becomes a traitor and who's rewarded for killing them traitors duncan rewards him for killing the traitors but then on that day it's fueled remember the witches give him that plant that seed of ambition it's further fueled by um duncan giving him the thane of cordor and that then leads to a foul day because that's the day that then seeds are planted within Macbeth. Okay, so it leads to a foul day. So the battle against the traitors makes a foul day, not only because of that, but because innocent people are dying and when they're fighting for their kings and their leaders. So we've got that idea. Then we've also got this idea that this paradox, fair is foul. Seemingly good men appear good on the exterior. So all seemingly good men. So all seemingly good. Let's write this down. All seemingly good men. Macbeth men. because We'll put that in brackets. Macbeth. Because he was he came across as being seemingly good. Um, all seemingly good men. Macbeth appear. Linking back to our appearance first reality. Appear good. On the exterior, remember he puts a veneer on, okay, on the exterior, but on the interior, that's internally, remember, on the interior, they are deceitful, and you can say dishonest, we could put here deceitful, uh, dishonest, uh, uh, fraudulent. You can carry. We could carry on. Yeah, etc. These words we've used these words before. So you've used exterior. You've used interior. Okay. So these are all words you've used before. So we can see that this paradox it shows and it's linking to how Macbeth can be seen so what appears to be fair is is foul okay and it's that paradox and that that contradiction of what appears is not always reality so i suppose it, we can also say that it shows just how corrupt it, the corrupt it shows us just how um when we look at it it shows us corrupt nature of men's hearts so it shows that how men can have a corrupt heart as well. So corrupt nature of man's heart it can be shown here. So let's write it down here. So corrupt nature of man's heart. So all men have the ability to be corrupt. All men have the ability to be deceitful Okay, within them, locked away internally. And I suppose that's what it is saying. When we move on from that, if we look at this, oh, hang on a minute, I've missed a little bit off. So this part here, this quote, I suppose if we look at the quote, we can say this quote, yeah, it lays down the foundations. So this quote lays down the foundations. And, and the foundations are like the things that set it out, okay? So this is the right at the start of the play, remember? So this quote lays down the foundations for Macbeth's actions so for Macbeth's actions okay so it lays down the foundations for Macbeth's actions and what appears is not 
So straight away, I suppose we can say that right at the beginning, we should know what Mac Macbeth appears. He won't carry on to be like that, okay? He's going to let his v veneer slip, all right? Let's look at the word foul, okay? This word foul, let's put it down here. This word foul. So foul, it's an adjective. Okay, so the foul is an adjective. Let's underline that. And I suppose that word foul can show moral plus physical corruption. And remember what I've told you, corruption means, okay? So it can show corruption. Let's write it down here in a different colour so it stands out. So it shows corruption means when somebody is dishonest and somebody is fraudulent. Okay, and Macbeth is both of these things, okay, he's dishonest to the king and he's fraudulent to the king when he comes across as being completely fair, but then he is foul, okay, so it's that idea of that what appears is not reality and it comes across again, and I suppose we can say that here in this quotation, nature is mirroring, so it's showing, so nature is mirroring what later happens in the play okay so what later happens in the play so as it unfolds so that links us back to that foreshadow doesn't it so nature is mirroring what is happening later on in the play so what is at the beginning is fair is foul okay and at the end do you think you th what was foul is fair it's that idea again it's mirroring it okay when we've looked at all that and we've come round to this, we we'll look at this and we think, well, this, this quotation here, it, we can say that it, we've got equivocation, okay? And equivocation is ambiguous language. So equivocation, okay? And I'll move this across for you. So equivocation, and write this down, is ambiguous, okay? It's, you can't actually make out, it's not certain, it's unclear. So we've got ambiguous language that the witches say, okay? And the witches, they might, um, they might say it to avoid the truth or committing oneself, okay? So it's ambiguous language and that you just, you could put down, avoid uh, committing oneself avoid committing one's self okay or to avoid the truth yes yeah, so avoid committing oneself or the truth and that it's it's that idea that it's not clear what they're saying and it's like they're playing around with Macbeth's mind okay so we see here that we establish that the um, the sisters desire to create mischief because it's not clear okay it's that idea of it being ambiguous and unclear and it, we don't know if it's the truth or not okay so we it's we, it's established we establish um that the sisters yeah the sisters desire so they want to yeah desire to create mischief okay they want to mess about with Macbeth they want to inflict some some pain on him or cause him some discomfort they desire to cause mischief okay we see here as well with the way they with the way they say it that the witches play around with the natural order and they create chaos okay and we see that right at the start with the thunder and the way they disrupt 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 the natural order straight away so witches play around we'll write this down play around with the natural order okay and they cre create chaos and create chaos and we see that whenever the witches come along there's always chaos yeah there's there's na there's there's not that natural nice weather there's always thunder and lightning okay which adds to that supernatural element but it also shows that they cause chaos whenever they're around when Macbeth 
um, is no longer fair and he turns foul, nature goes haywire, doesn't it? And that natural order, once that natural order of the divine right of kings is broken, when Macbeth commits regicide because he becomes dishonest and fraudulent and he lets that um, appear and slip and the reality actually come out of what kind of person he is, then we see nature and that natural order go haywire and we see the... We see, um, the horses and nature going against the natural norms and it goes into complete chaos and we see that happen. I suppose what else we can say about this quotation again is actually that this quote, quotation reoccurs throughout the play. Okay, it's a, re, it re, it's a reoccurring thing that shows, a reoccurring theme, sorry, that shows evil and deception in the name of equivocation and it shows about ambition and good, okay? So we've got that kind of idea that it reoccurs throughout the play. Also, it, Macbeth says this right at the beginning of the play, okay? Uh, sorry, it's Macbeth's first line. This is the witches saying it, but then Macbeth actually mirrors this with his first lines, okay? And it's intrinsically intertwined. So Macbeth's first line, let's write this down here in red. Okay, so Macbeth's, first line um, in the play, first line mirrors um, this, okay, this quotation, this quote, so Macbeth's first line, oh, I've put line, line, Macbeth's first line mirrors this quote, okay, and it's intrinsically in intertwined, and I suppose it shows um, the rot and decay that's hidden inside him. Okay, so you could write down um, shows the rot and decay that is hidden inside him. Okay, so we can say that it's hidden inside him. So we can see that we, with him mirroring this, okay it shows the decay and rot that's hidden inside him okay what reality is and what doesn't appear all right um i suppose as well we can say that macbeth externally ap appears as a hero that's the idea he appears as this fair person but actually on the interior is this okay is this foul person all right and it mirrors that when he says it at the end